Maintenant, on continue avec notre programme pour l'après-midi. Um, so this afternoon, our next presentation is going to be by uh, Brigida, uh, who will be talking about disability representation in uh, the Overwatch video game. So I will let her take it away. Hello, everyone. I hope you're all doing well. Um, can you all see my screen? All right. So my name is Brigida, and I'll be presenting my doctoral thesis proposal. Um, I might have to turn off my video because um, my connection's a little wonky when video is um, on. So I'll be presenting my doctoral thesis presentation, but first I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I'm a gamer, streamer, fan fiction writer, and reader. Um, And uh, the main focus of my research is the video game Overwatch. Uh, it's a team-based first-person shooter created by Blizzard Entertainment. Um, while Overwatch does not have a story or a campaign mode, it has plenty of history and lore thanks to its many comics, cinematics, and character biographies. I absolutely fell in love with the, the game as soon as my friends introduced it to me. Um, between the gorgeous graphics, the play style, and the rich backstories of each of the characters, I felt increasingly drawn to unpacking it. My interest in studying the construction of disability in Overwatch and its fan fiction was sparked by an in-game interaction between two characters, Angela Ziegler, also known as Mercy, and um, Anna Amari. Mercy says, you know, Anna, there are procedures we could look into repairing your eye. And Anna responds with, you're very kind, but uncomfortable with who I am now. It's a good reminder. So Mercy views Anna's um, missing eye as a problem in need of fixing. However, Anna turns down the offer because she views her disability as a lived experience rather than something that she wants to fix or cure. Uh, for clarification, I'll interpret Overwatch's characters as having disability if they show signs of physical or psychological impairments. In the context of Western society, these characters' impairments are considered, are considered disability. However, in the social context of Overwatch, um, gameplay and lore, these impairments are not necessarily seen as disabling or remarked upon as disabilities. Only players have interpreted them, interpreted them this way. So, out of the 32 characters, I picked 10. So there's Anna, Symmetra, Cassidy, Reinhardt, Torbjorn, Genji, Roadhog, Junkrat, Doofist, and Sigma. So Anna is a woman of color, uh, elder, a mother, and a disabled veteran. Um, Symmetra is a woman of color with autism, an engineer, and an amputee. Uh, Cassidy, previously known as McCree, is a gunslinger and amputee with a cybernetic arm. Reinhardt is an elder crusader and disabled veteran. Uh, Torbjorn is an elder engineer and amputee. Genji is a um, ninja who suffer suffered massive injuries, who most of his body was replaced with cybernetic enhancements. Roadhog suffers from depression and uses a breathing apparatus. Uh, Junkrat is an amputee. He lost both his arm and leg in a explosive accident. Uh, Doofus Hunt uses a prosthetic arm and Sigma is a scientist with schizophrenia. So these are my research questions. So how is disability represented in Overwatch and fan fiction outside of the game? What ideas surrounding disability are reproduced, exposed, and recreated? How are these images of disability represented in Overwatch and its fan fiction? Do the images represent or challenge ableism? Uh, the second question is, given that the focus of disability interaction with race, sexuality, and gender, how does Overwatch's fandom engage with Reinhardt, Torbjorn, Doofus, Junkrat, Roadhog, Symmetra, Genji, Kaski, Sigma, and Anna? So given the po boundless possibilities for representing disability in fan fiction, what does this reimagination or preservation of disability reveal about the construction of otherness? And which socially constructed norms surrounding gender, race, and sexuality get reimagined in disability-centered fan fiction and which get preserved? So, in short, I explore how the video game Overwatch represents disability through game content. 
So comics, lore, cinematic, and other narratives, and then fan design stories. So my, excuse me, my study takes an intersectional disability studied study centered approach to fan fiction analysis. The social and the social, I will centering my study on the, using the social model of disability. So alongside the theory of intersectionality, which provides the framework for my research. So the social model is the civil rights approach to disability. It distinguishes between impairment and the disability where impairment is a limitation of someone's physical or non-physical function and disability, which is created where the attitudes and structures of society. I've chosen to use the social model of disability because it describes the barriers where that were placed on people with disabilities and intersectionality fits well with this discourse because it provides additional clarity on how social identities overlap with disability. So for my methodology, I'm using content analysis, close reading, visual content analysis from publicly available websites of fanfiction.net, archives of our own, DeviantArt, Pinterest, and Wattapad. And I'll be using the top 10 most popular stories of each of, each of the characters. So um, the strength and limitations of my research would be filling in the gaps on literature about video game-based fan fiction, um, which would prioritize discussions of the body and participation in character lore and fan fiction. So where the canon lacks, the fan fiction fills its space. So for instance, if a character does not have um, much detail about its lore, oftentimes some fan fiction does fill in the space where um, the fans want to want to complete the story. Um, however, I do have some limitations because some characters don't have um, 10 stories available because they are either newer or not as popular. So it's important to know that although the numbers of stories and images are vast, so do not display or discuss disability directly. So I will consider this absence and that this research based on disability representation in video games and video game based fan fiction. And I believe that discussing the absence of text or images speaks a lot to this study. So what the lack of disability representation, what the lack of representation means and how the stories are crafted so that disability is not included. So representation is important. Video games are growing in richness and becoming more inclusive and accessible on multiple levels and invite study and communication. Fans have thanked Blizzard Entertainment for the array of customizable controls, which help players with disabilities adjust the control settings to fit their play style. Their inclusivity fosters connections and allows players to connect and emphasize with others. Players often feel drawn to, character to characters who look like themselves, whether it's appearance, culture, speak the same language, and so on. Similarly, fan fiction does the same. People can see themselves represented in the video game content and fan fiction when the content represents diverse characters. In short, Overwatch is a game for everyone, no matter who you are in real life. There's a character that represents you, even if you're a giant hog or a glasses wearing gorilla. Thank you for your time. Um, if anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Sorry, I have like a little bit of a cold. That's okay. It's it's the time of year. I think there's there's uh, multiple people feeling that right now. Um, what a super interesting uh, topic and questions um, that that you're investigating with this research. Does anybody have any questions? Can feel oh, okay, Jen. Go ahead. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, Regina. Nice to see you. you. Um, <laughs> uh, so unrelated to that, um, <laughs> my question is um, about your definition of disability, actually, yes. um, because you spoke, and I might have missed it, and I apologize um, if I did, um, you spoke about the model that you'll be using, mm. and so there's the social and medical, and you'll be focusing on the medical, uh, the social, um, not the medical, but um, I'm just wondering about the use of the word disability itself. Okay. Um, and, and whether you're defining it in a specific way, like how you've chosen the characters that you've chosen, because, um, there's different like thoughts or philosophies on even just like the terminology disability mm -hmm. and how that relates to like ableist discussions. So I've chosen to not use an actual definition. 
through through the research is just to, to like base base it on the model itself because the model studies the barriers in which people face right so in view of like using a, a specified definition which, which which would limit um like which would would I'm, I'm trying to like think of words so in you of using a like a specific definition i've chosen to to use the model itself because the model discusses um limitations and barriers specifically and like it ties really close to intersectionality which also discusses limits and barriers i don't know if that answers your question Um, I think, uh, Diane, I think, yeah, like an advantage would be that I'm familiar with the game and the content and most of the content of the game. So I would sort of know um, what to look for. And, like, I haven't, I haven't read all of the lore yet. Um, but I think it does also sort of make me a little bit biased because I am a gamer myself. So I do, I do think that's, that's also a little bit of a barrier. Okay, a couple more questions. Jen, we'll go uh, to you first and then we'll, we'll go back to the chat. Well, I'm happy to follow up on, on Diane's question based on your response there, um, Brigitte, because I've encountered similar challenges with my research, um, looking at the intersections of like uh, fandom and, and academia. So pandemics or, or being an ACA fan, uh, there's a lot of writing on that. And so I'm wondering how you're controlling for your bias. Uh, oh, so how I'm controlling for my bias. So I, I've made a positionality statement to to discuss where I stand on the like this game or like my interest in this game and, and so forth. And because I'm only I'm using like the publicly available sources. So the fan fiction from publicly available sites and from the Overwatch website. So I feel like um I'm not put inserting myself completely into this because I'm looking at like outside sources. I don't know if that, that answers your question. Awesome. So, uh, so I'll just read the question in the chat. So the question is uh, from Ash. What inspired this topic uh, as a research topic? So I absolutely loved, like I love the game. I play the game often. Um, and the actually the absolute interaction the, two, the interaction between the two characters was really what like threw me where um i come from a feminist background so so i did a master's in women's and gender studies and i've always been really interested in, in like social issues like and discussing intersectionality and um generally um uh, issues within the social categories and as someone with a like with a disability and then this voice line sort of like triggered where we were, I was like playing the game with a couple of friends and I heard the interaction between these two characters. And I was like, oh, this is really fascinating. I want to see like, what more is there? Like what other things are available for me to look at? And it was sort of it. <laughs> it kind of started on a whim, to be honest. <laughs> so, um, uh, um... A question from from me. Um, do you find like I know absolutely nothing about this game uh, or the popularity of it, but uh, you know, with, with fan fiction, do you find it kind of evolving? Are there like is it is it still recent posts? Like are people still posting about it and generating this contact uh, or content in these narratives, or has it kind of you know? fallen into a lull where you have all the data that you'll need already out there. So there is a there is a lot of content or like currently out there, right? And some of the characters are much newer than others. Like uh, Sigma is newer than Anna. Anna I believe came out and was one of the original characters in like 2016. And Sigma was like 2019. So some of his content is a little bit newer, but the fan fiction being produced is a lot less than what it used to be because um, Blizzard announced Overwatch 2 to come out. So people are on are waiting mostly for that kind of content before they start writing again, I'm assuming. Great, okay. Yeah, the, the world of uh, fan fiction can definitely uh -huh. be a rabbit <laughs> it's, hole. It's a fascinating <laughs> world. For sure, you, you can definitely um, understand a variety of perspectives. It's, it's pretty eye-opening sometimes mm -hmm. and yeah, maybe sometimes only a little scarring. <laughs> 
Yeah, like one of the one of the posts for Cassidy specifically. Um, so his lore doesn't super detail um, how he received his injury. Uh, there's like a, like the rumor mill is that um, there's an attraction between him and another character where she has a robot butler and she threatens she threatens him to have her robot butler rip off his other arm. So at one point you assume that like it's her robot butler who originally did the damage. And then, um, but like his actual lore is that he um, became injured because of a battle at some city. I can't remember the name of it. <laughs> On a mission. So. Yeah. So um, I agree with Diane. Diane says uh, such an interesting topic and uh, looking forward to hearing more as you continue your research. I echo that. Um, uh, yeah. So. Well, oh, hold on a sec. Take care of that. Um, did anyone else have any other questions? Going in the uh, in the chat or Andrea's cave. Jen, yes. Sure. I'm I'm happy to ask questions. Um, I've got tons of them. It's been so long since I've seen Brigida because you know COVID. Um, my question for Brigida is: so you you listed your research questions on uh, on your slides um, near, near the end, and I'm wondering like what the implications are for your research. So um, you spoke about like how how disability uh, is framed or imagined. Um, uh, and and the question that I got um, during the course of my master's thesis, um, and that you know sits with me every day while I work on my dissertation, is like, so what? Um, and I don't know if it's a question that's like more common for for those of us that research like popular culture type studies, because it's like, yeah, it's just on a screen or it's just you know a book or whatever. But like, what are the potential implications of the findings um, from your project? So, well, like for for me, it's like it's more of like okay, like if representation is there, then how can we improve representation in other places, right? So like, if we're looking at this particular particular game, right? I mean, you look at other games, you're like, okay, but like, is representation there? Do I, do I see myself in, in this game? Do I see myself amongst these characters? Do I hear myself? Do I, so kind of like the idea of um, inclusivity, specifically of like, uh, if, um, if, if we see ourselves and we feel more included, are we more likely to like participate in that particular popular culture, right? Are we more likely to participate in um, fandom that, that represents us where, where we see ourselves and how can that be applied to, to other, like, and, and not necessarily, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of research on other popular cultures, like television, cinema, movies, but there's very little on video games specifically and representations of video games specifically. And it comes very much so from like, um, game, like gamer culture and like what used to be limited to, to men only and was, um, and then as, as time progressed, it opened up to um, various types of people and it's not being limited to just the, the white man who is programmer. So it's kind of like, okay, but like, like here is what we see in this game. How can we apply it to others? Um, I'll just, uh, ha I have a question. Have you found that um, people online, like in the fan fiction and, and in these boards, are they seeing this game? Like, is, is the general population seeing this game as a disability centered game? Or is mm -hmm. that being kind of lost to the general population and it's, it's no one's really focusing on that? I think it's, it's not necessarily like, um, the, the general public, but like there are people who praised um, the game who praised developers for including someone like people with disabilities, like Symmetra who has autism. Um, fans who are who have autism have like sent emails and letters to the developers thanking them for like having a person who represents them, who they see themselves in, where it's not very common. And uh, one of the fans was just really excited that um, she saw herself in a character 
and uh, she wrote a letter to developers who like published it online in a news article saying, look, like fans are excited for, for this character. So, and like, not just that, like, even if you like the game, like the actual gameplay, like when you actually play the game, it has one of the best customizable controls possible for people with disabilities. So it's not just the representation in the game, it's also like the physical aspect of the game too, that's representative or that's inclusive. That's that's great. That's awesome. But it, do you still feel that the game itself, like that's not the primary focus? Is is disability representation and dis no, like there's it's, 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 it's just a natural part of it. Mm -hmm. So it's not the primary focus because the game is not a story mode, right? So if you look at other games, like um, I don't want to ruin too much. I don't know if there are any other gamers in here, but there's a game called Life is Strange, which does discuss disability, and there's, um, there's Depression Quest, which is much older, that also discusses um, mental health issues. So uh, the, the Overwatch doesn't specifically, like, target um, story modes or campaign modes, right? But, like, it's the lore itself that, like, attracts you. Like, it's the story part that is representative of it. Like there, there are character backgrounds. Awesome. Well, uh, I definitely look forward to uh, your your thesis defense and and hearing and, and learning more about that in the time to come. Um, do we have any other questions uh, from any of our our guests? Okay. I think I think. Uh, Maybe we're all a little questioned out from that that Q and A period, but um, hopefully it was insightful for everyone. It, it definitely you, everyone. was very much for me. Thank you for your presentation. You did a wonderful job, um, and uh, thank you again for your uh, collaboration and contribute uh, contribution. That's the word uh, to to our conference.